Ciao internet! Oggi rispondiamo alle vostre domande di teoria musicale. If I'm going to get someone to explain an Italian scale, next lesson, how about a Canadian scale? Well, first of all, do you know how to spell Canada? C-A-N-A-D-A. I don't know about a Canadian scale, but definitely I have a Canadian chord progression. So first of all, since our can us Canadian always finish our phrases with A, the root note, the, the, main, the first chord of the Canadian chord progression is A. And then we spell Canada. So it's A, and the C of Canada, the A of Canada, N stands for Neapolitan, which in A is a B flat. And then I have another A, D, and A. And that's your Canadian chord progression. A. You hate jazz. Yes, no. Uh, no, I don't specifically hate jazz. I hate some jazz. And uh, let's face it, jazz is like any other kind of music. There is great jazz, and there is mediocre jazz, and there is horrible jazz. And uh, like uh, the writer Theodore Sturgeon was saying, 90% uh, of everything is crap. So, okay, but this is true for uh, pretty much every style of music, okay? If you want to listen to the top 10% of every style of music, so you get the good stuff. I don't specifically hate jazz. I find it mm, when I'm relaxing during in my free afternoons, jazz is not what I put on the speakers, but I like it. There are many other things I listen to. Uh, the thing is, why you guys are so hung up with jazz? I mean, why you guys are not concerned that I don't like dubstep, for instance? I mean, I may like dubstep. Or, I don't know, romantic uh, Western music or gamelan or other stuff. It's music, guys. There's no style of music as that have the monopoly of anything, <laughs> okay? So, yeah, I like, my, I like good jazz. I really don't like bad jazz, but you can put anything. <laughs> I like good metal. I really don't like bad metal. I like good gamelan. I really don't like bad gamelan, okay? I really like good choir music, and I really don't like bad choir music. We can go on, but you got the drip, no? Amazing cleanness and style of giving this information. By the way, do you know why harmonic major is called harmonic? Well, in music theory, naming does not always make sense. These all start because we... It all start from minor scales. So we have a natural minor scale, okay, and the natural minor scale in A, for instance, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay? The harmonic minor scale is slightly different. It's A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A. Okay, and it was called harmonic minor because we used to take chords from this scale. So we used to take our harmonies from the scale. Then the name stuck, and we, um, of course you can use harmonic minor also to write melodies. They use everything, everything for everything anyway, but the name stuck, and that's what we left. The harmonic major scale in A will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A. So the last few notes, E, F, G sharp, A, are the same as the harmonic minor scale. So, by analogy, we call this scale the harmonic major because it reminds us of the big interval F to G sharp in the harmonic minor scale. But there is nothing harmonic specifically in the harmonic major scale. Okay, so that's why it's called this way. Just the name just stuck. Beautiful thing, though, <clears throat> if you start um, digging a little bit deeper, is that if you know a little bit about negative harmony, and I make a video, I made a video about this specific thing I'm going to say right now. If you take the harmonic minor scale and you take the negative harmony of the harmonic minor scale, you get the harmonic major scale. So, and vice versa, if you take the harmonic major scale and take the negative harmony, you go back to the harmonic minor scale. So those two scales are joined in some way, which is really interesting to me. I mean, it's like there's, there's some a deeper symmetry in all that. So I think the name is appropriate, but at least having the same name for those two scales is appropriate. I would have chosen something different than harmonic, but as usual, we are stuck with the names that um, people 300 years ago gave to all those scales. So that's what we have. But there's nothing specific harmonic about the harmonic major scale. One major problem I see with this is that your tuning and the recording's tuning might be different. If your A is tuned to 440 hertz and the recording has A tuned to 425 hertz, you might not find any of the pentatonics or even notes on your guitar match up with the recording. 
bands like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath like to do this. I know for sure that Strawberry Fields Forever by the Beatles ended up being between A and B flat major. That's because all those classic rock bands were guitar and bass band only. You don't need to tune the drums in rock usually. In jazz you tune the drums. In, in, uh, in rock you typically don't tune the drums. But the thing is, so, for instance, when uh, Van Halen was recording their, their first, they were, they were recording their first four albums, the only thing that happened is that uh, Eddie was tuning his guitar with itself, okay, meaning as long as the notes were in the right interval, he was good, then the bass player was tuning on him, and, and they were playing that. So the tuning, of course, fluctuates anywhere. It could be slightly sharper, slightly flatter, and you can totally be halfway through an A and a G sharp. So it's going to be hard to transcribe that. Well, you have a couple of solutions. First solution is to find yourself a software that can pitch shift the song so you can take it back to standard tuning. Second solution is tune like them, so tune down your guitar until you match, okay? Uh, or at least you can do that if the tuning of the song is constant. The problem with those situations is that sometimes um, the tuning of the song is not constant. Once I was transcribing a song, a song by Queen, um, I'm not telling you which one, I'm letting you guys find out. It's always a good exercise to transcribe Queen songs, so, okay? But when I was transcribing the solo, I, did, I realized by hearing it that the solo was taken in, in three chunks, in three takes, and uh, you, you, you could hear a slightly, dif a slightly difference in tone. And I realized that only when I was transcribing it, so really paying attention. And those three chunks were in three slightly different tunings. So from the beginning of the solo to the end, the tuning shifted something like 15 cents, 15, 20 cents, which honestly, it's a lot. And incredibly enough, the rest of the song shifted too. So I don't know if this was a problem of takes or tape moving faster or slower, but uh, the thing is, when you listen to the song, you don't notice. But when you go down and try to transcribe, you realize all those things, and it's crazy. It's crazy how all these things still works, even if the tuning shifts. And um, I don't know. Uh, at some level, I like to think, uh, I'm not sure if I'm right, but I like to think that this kind of fluctuation of the tuning gave the song a certain flavor that we don't have from modern song. But maybe I am completely wrong, and it doesn't come from there. Just saying that, yes, you're right, Yes, some bands do not tune exactly at 440 or 432 or any other number. They just tune every song however happens. So you need to find a solution you transcribe the song. And that's the only thing that is doing. Is this a scalloped strat? Didn't see anybody playing one for a while. What are the advantages and problems you personally have to deal with? Sorry for my bad English and greetings from Germany. Yes, it's a scallop stra uh, strat, okay? And um, the having a scallop guitar is like having super tall frets. So if you like tall frets, you're going to like the scalloping. If you don't like tall frets, you're definitely not going to like the scalloping. Um, the advantage is uh, that you are not touching the wood with your fingers when you fret a note, which means that you can move the string sideways much easier. This is both um, a curse and a blessing. It's a blessing because bending and vibrato become much easier because you can literally grab the string, put your fingers under the string and push up. Mm -hmm. So I have tens on this guitar, 10, 14, 6, I guess, and they feel like nines, okay? So they feel way lighter than they actually are. Um, it's a chorus though, because every time you play a chord or you play double stops or you, or if your technique is not perfect and you're not light enough with your hands, you are going to push the string a little bit on the side and you are going to sound sharp. So it really, um, it really puts your left hand technique under the microscope. Now I have a fairly light uh, left hand. I really don't like pressing a lot. So this actually helps me keeping, keeping my technique in tip top because every time I start to sound sharp, I'm like, no, too much tension, I need to relax. But again, you may like it or not. I personally love it and this guitar is way more comfortable to play for me than any other guitar and uh, you're not gonna find this guitar anywhere because uh, I had this custom scallop by a good dear friend of mine but you can do it by yourself there are instructions over the internet don't do it on an expensive guitar or at least try first with a cheap guitar but uh, for me totally worth it uh, if it's good for you 
maybe. The only thing is, yeah, you really need to try because that's a tactile thing and there is no way I can explain a tactile feeling, okay, in a video in any meaningful way. So go on your local music shop, try a scallop guitar, see if you like it.